Kelly, you are here today to petition the court for a paternity test for your 23-year-old daughter, Artisha Connolly. Yes. You say that you were sleeping with another man during the time Artisha was conceived, and after 23 years, you still don't know for sure if Mr. Harrison is your daughter's biological father. Now, Mr. Harrison, you argue that during the period of conception, you and Ms. Connolly only had sex one time, and you even caught her with another man. So, Ms. Connolly, tell us about what it was like growing up without a father. Well, Judge, it's a horrible feeling. I really wish this feeling on no other young woman in the world. I've experienced feelings of abandonment. I've been lonely. I've never had a lot of friends. I've only kept about two or three friends. And on the top of that, people didn't like me, and I've always wondered, why is it that this person doesn't want to be involved with me? And then I have to deal with the reality of my own father, who's alive and well, not in jail, not dead, not in another state. He's living in the same state and does not, has not tried to contact me, doesn't want to be around me. That hurts. And I just want, I just want answers because he's in the same state and he's taking care of other kids. And he's taking care of other kids that are not even his. Mr. Harrison, is this true what she contends? You have obviously doubt that she's yes, your Your Honor, daughter. Um, I had my doubt down through the years. In spite of the fact of my doubt, I should have and could have done a better job, but I didn't. Explain to the court your doubt. Where did your doubt begin? Well, when we met, we were having uh, we had a relationship, and one daughter was born, and at the part time, she said, well, that's not your child. But it wasn't your child. Right, so I just kept on... It was saying, proven to be so. Right. Well, I know it wasn't proven. She said it wasn't mine, so I took her word for it. And as we kept progressing, she got pregnant again with our teacher. And I thought it was my child, so I stayed with him and tried to do the right thing. You had one child, your first child. He thought it was his, but it wasn't. Yes. Then when the second child came along, our teacher, he thought she was at first, and then doubt began to set in. Were you certain at Mr. Harrison was our teacher's father? No, I wasn't, because at that time, I'm ashamed of myself, because I was living a, a, a fast life. I was a party girl, like, you know, when I, I, I used to go out a lot, I used to sell drugs, hang in the street, party, this party animal. And at that time, Linda came in my life, I was coming, walking down the street, he was driving down the street, and he picked me up, like, you know, he, uh, like I was a trick or something, you know, like he was looking for some fun or something. At the time, we exchanged numbers, you know, and, and he gave me some money. And then through on the years, he, he romanced me, he picked me up from work, brought me flowers, just picked me up. So, I mean, it was a, a little, little romance. So, you know, as me being the woman that I am, I was like, okay, I found a, a bam, bam type guy, you know, he trying to do something with, with me. So I might as well go ahead and, you know, have, you know deal with this, you know, because he was giving me money, you know, taking me places, you know, giving me all his money. Cause I, so it seems like he was courting you. Yeah, he was trying he... to court me, yeah. Yeah. Wanted to be in a relationship? Yeah, yeah. So what happens when you have this first child? Okay. It's at, not his. At that time, Your Honor, we were, uh, we, we got married. We moved in an apartment together. And uh, at, that, at that point, then it was kind of like, you know, he was a, a Bama. He was a country person. You know, he, he went to church. He stayed in church a lot. And, and I was just used to hanging out in the streets. So, you know, my, me and my girlfriend, you know, we would go out and I was a little promiscuous, you know, fast. And I did have someone else that I was, you know, having sexual intercourse with. And uh, I got pregnant with my uh, oldest child. And come to find out that, you know, it wasn't his child. All right. But somehow you all stayed together. You, yeah, you... we stayed together. And, you know, because I tried to be a good wife, you know, I was, you know, uh, still selling drugs doing things that I was, you know, out in the street, partying, having fun. And then they would go to work, come home. I was a good person. You know, I'll be there, you know, take care of the kids. When my girlfriend come around, you know, he'll babysit or I take the babysit to, baby to my mom and we'll go out. Because he was born. He was a bam. He's when a you have our teacher, are you, are you saying to yourself in your mind at the time, I hope this doesn't happen again. I've had one child and it's not his. What if... 
is our Tisha's here. It's like, are you concerned? Are you questioning? I'm questioning because at that point, well, she I was, never stayed home. I've never well, been in the house. I, was, I got knocked up. I had a Tisha in prison. Gotcha. I was still hanging out. In the and street. before that, were you with many different men or just one other man besides Mr. Several. Harrison? Several. Several. Mm -hmm. Okay. But my point is, that I think 23 years, if they're asking the question, now, why now? Why not now? But I think this could have stopped a long time ago. She would have went to court and asked for child support. That would have solved all this right then and she there. She said she did. She said she did. You. I did. I, I, I've been to court. She took me to court and asked for child support. Nobody can so find I mean, if, you. If, You're always gone. Besides You're the court, it ain't your job to find me. The, the law the will law find me. I found you now. If I'm guilty, the law will find me. They'll bring me to justice. Excuse me, Your Honor. She never Hot. took that upon her ever. It's 23 years later. Hot. She could have nipped that, that child one year old. She could have went to court and gave them my address oh, and gave them everything. She How needed dare you right now? Right How dare you right now say that? So you're saying. Your point is, Mr. Harrison, that adds credence to your doubt that's, because that's correct, but you're she, saying, if you felt I was the father or possibly right. the father, then why wouldn't you she go down that long time ago and, and go to the courts and that. request child support, and then they would have found that's me, correct. and we would have had a DNA test 20 something that's years correct. ago. That's correct. That's correct. So because that didn't happen, in your mind, you began to doubt even more. Right. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Ms. Connolly, you're saying that this is incorrect. You did ask for support. Yes, but, but let, me, let me explain to you. I was yes. in prison. My mom and my dad had my, our, had my children. So my, my mom, she was the public me. assistant. The, pub, the, uh, the, the, the court was trying to find them, and they couldn't find them because if you want public assistance, they automatically try to get you public child support. We'll try to find them. So your mother had the court trying to find him, but they could not find him. Right, no. But you also state that you were sleeping with different men during that time. Were they going after the other men as well? Lyndon Harrison. They found my me mother on the third was child. Lyndon Harrison. And why at is that? that? Did your mother husband. say she has slept with multiple men? So I'm not quite sure. She gave them his name. Yeah, well, put it this way. I, I didn't, she I didn't give her his name. She took me for the third child, I which wasn't mine. Never, and I, and oh, George stop told me lying. I'm free to go. He's lying because I'm the third I don't child. have a reason to it's lie. The, she's the third child. My oldest son is 33 years old. He's, his father's taking care of him all his life. Well, My son, second child, he thought that was his. And it wasn't. Is, and it's not. This is the third child, our Tisha, who we've been trying to look for him. My mom's been looking for him all through the years when Tisha was born, all through the baby, the pictures. This is the only picture that she has with him since she was a baby. She hasn't seen him no more than five times through her entire life. My first semester of college, that's when I met him. That's when I first spent time with him. It was weird. He was trying to be a father. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I just turned 18. I'm about to go party. And I guess because <laughs> of our little outing, our, our relationship, our time spent together, it wasn't great. So we went our separate ways, and he didn't try to contact me. People tell me all the time they see him on the avenue. I said, OK, well, I'm going to go over there and look for him. I took it upon myself to go to the liquor store where on the avenue where they, all, where they say they always see him. I went there for two years looking for him. And, I, and you want to know how I found him? I was sitting at the bus stop, and I saw him walking past me. And what did he say? And I, what happened? I said, excuse me, I've been looking for you. He said, <laughs> he said who are you? That's what he was saying. I said, it's your daughter, Tisha. That's correct. You didn't I, I recognize did, I didn't recognize it. Do you understand the root of his doubt, where it comes from? Yes, I do, but it's, it takes two. It takes two people to have a child. And if he had doubts, he should have tried himself. You can't just blame it on her. I'm not even talking about blame. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about doubt. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yeah, I understand. Do you get? Where his doubt originates from. Yes, I understand, but I still felt like you shouldn't have did that shady behavior towards me. As a young woman, as a young girl growing up, and I'm getting this type of behavior thrown at me, I should have been explained. Like, they should have explained it to me. I would have took it. I would have been able to handle it. But I didn't know, and I'm living this story tale of my mother and parent. They, my, my, mother, my mother and father, they were married when they had me, thinking they were in love. When, obviously, no. as I'm growing up, it's not the case, and he doesn't even want to be around. My mother told me when I was 21, my father, who I thought was my father all my life, that he wasn't my father. And I was hurt. So I can feel her pain, too. So today is about breaking cycles, 
and ensuring that this does not happen in yet another generation. I feel real bad for my daughter. It's a generation. I know. I feel bad for my daughter. I do. I feel I bad. I agree, Your Honor, because I think we both owe her apology. Like I said, I'm ashamed for the last 23 years. And if it is my daughter, then I ask God himself to forgive me. And I'm not just going to put the you blame know. all on him because she... She didn't really want to help me. We find both owe her an apology. I had to do it on my own. I understand. I didn't what know where it was. I commend her courage. You didn't try hard us. enough. What am I gonna find him for? I, I found tried him. to find him to get my divorce, and I found him when I got my divorce. But I tried to. I told you I couldn't find him. The yeah. court found him for real. The, and then honestly, I was, well, you know, Miss Connolly, I have to say this: you found him when you wanted to get your divorce. So well, maybe you could have helped find him a little sooner for your daughter. Well, so this situation because, could be resolved. It's for her benefit. Earlier, I think you have to take Earlier, some okay, responsibility. I, I tried to find him. I could not find him. That's be when I was trying to find my divorce. But I, I think at some point you have to take responsibility that you had a hand to play in this. Whether it was sleeping with multiple men at the same time where you are not sure who her father is or just not taking the proper steps sooner so that maybe they could be reunited or maybe you could have a test or what I have you. I hear Mr. Harrison him. just flat out apologizing and saying I'm ashamed of what I've done and this, if this is my daughter, I just Lyndon, hope... Lyndon knew when my mother lived there, he could have came around. Lyndon and he like just him. said, he's standing here saying, I am ashamed of the way I, what I've done. Okay, and I'm ashamed of myself and what I've done, but I grow out of that because I've been a better person. I don't use drugs anymore. I raise my kids. I work. That's wonderful. Okay, I'm not However, that bad a person. I tried to find him for her, but I could find it. I couldn't find it. Only way I found it, I got my divorce through land, land or tenant court. Mr. Harrison, do you want Artisha to be your daughter? More than anything in the world. Praise the Lord. How he because did. one thing, on the it doesn't matter what happened now. All the child of things won't matter. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what anybody says. These are all God's children. Those children belong to God. They didn't ask to be here. Those are God's children we are playing with. She didn't ask to be here. No, she did not. And if I'm wrong, I ask God himself to forgive me. Whether I am or whether I'm not, I commend that effort of being here. I can see where you get the preacher Ms. from. Ms. Connolly, your hope? Even though I found him, I tried to spend time with him. He blew me off, and that's something that I don't like. Um, that's what I deal with with current relationships with men, so that's how it kind of relates the situation with all relationships. I didn't like that. I told him to meet me at my job. He knew where I worked at. I told him when we first met at the bus stop, he said, I'm going to come down there and I'm going to see you. He didn't come. I called him seven times, and then I texted him, and I said, you know what, don't even come. Anyway. Don't even bother coming, because I left. He didn't respond. And, and then I called him the next day, and I said, can you come, can you come see me at my job? And he didn't, uh, I said, if you don't come, I'm going to be angry. He said, don't get angry. I said, no, I'm going to be angry if you do not come. And, and he's like, all day. right, I'll come. Let me finish. He said, all right, I'll come. So he didn't come. And I called him, and he don't answer. He flakes again. So I called him. I'm on the bus. I'm off of work. I said, where you live at? I'm about to come and see you. He said, hold on. Let me ask my lady. I said, what does that have to do with anything? Give me your address. He won't give me his address. He said, I'm going to call you back. He never called me back. And I called him back, and he didn't answer the phone. So ultimately today, you want to I find just out? Know you if want he to is? know? I want to know. I want to know. Are you hoping I, that he's your father? If if I am, I'm hoping that he is because I wouldn't know who who is who is. If he's how not. about you, Miss Connolly? Yeah. What are you hoping for? I hope he is the father, so I can I don't have to keep searching for him. Ask her what I said to her when she called me the last phone call. Who? Our teacher. I said call your mama. Call my mother. I said I want to talk to her. No, I said, we need to set this record okay, straight right okay. there. This I said, I want to deal with you. Well, I'll tell you what. Okay, uh, what we can set the record straight right here, right now. Jerome, the results. And then if you are, what you going to do? As I said, I asked God himself. What you going to do about the 23 years that you ain't been there? I can't live in the past. Yeah, well, okay. These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Connolly versus Harrison, when it comes to 23-year-old Artisha Connolly, 
Mr. Harrison, you are oh her God. father. Congratulations. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, I never introduced her into my family for my doubt. I let my doubt get the best of me. Miss Connolly, how do you feel? I mean, should have done this a long time ago. Well, it's really been a hard for Tisha. It has, because her self-esteem was low, but she has got out of it. That's why she's been in college, gone to college for five years. And she's been, she made homecoming queen. And you know, she ran for Miss Texas Southern University. So she, she's really been, you know, a real, real, real inspiration for me. You know, because she's gone from that little shy girl to now this beautiful woman. A right beauty now. queen. <laughs> beautiful. And you know, you said she's been an inspiration for you. Yes, ma'am. And that's I... what this court is all about. It's about inspiring mm -hmm. people to I... leave this courtroom yes. better than they came in. Yes. Now, you came in, Miss Connolly, and you didn't know the truth for certain. Yeah. But now you do. Yeah. Mr. Harrison has apologized uh -huh. in front of this entire courtroom. He acknowledges his fault. I am hoping that you will begin to honor promises that you've made here today. Mr. Are we clear? Yes. Court is adjourned. <laughs> Mr. Angelari, you claim the defendant, Ms. Vargas, was married and having an affair with you when she got pregnant. Yes, Your Honor, that's correct. Now, you say she initially told you that you were not the father of her 11-month-old son, but then dropped the bomb that the child was indeed yours... That is correct. ...after Honey. her marriage was over. That is correct. Ms. Vargas, you admit that you lied to Mr. Angelari because you say you were trying to save your marriage. Yes, Your Honor. But now that your marriage is over, you claim you are convinced he is the father of your son, and you're here to prove it today. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Angelari, how did you end up in a relationship with a married woman? Well, first of all, Your Honor, Ms. Vargas and I, we were never in a relationship. Okay. We worked together. We were good friends. She would come to me to confide with me over her rocky relationship that she had with her husband. Rocky. That's what happened at first. Then, a few weeks later, she came in, said it's the last straw. I'm completely done with them. Then, next thing you know, we became better friends. She had brought her kids over a few times. We'd go out at night. Uh-huh. We started drinking a lot together. One night, we ended up back at my place. We'd been at the club. We got turned up. We're out there doing our thing. We went to the house, started doing our thing. Our thing? Yeah. Your Honor. <laughs> that night, when, when we, you know, had sexual intercourse, you planned to get me pregnant. I feel like you did. Oh, no, that's a... that you may Woo. hear some things that will evoke intense emotion. Yes, Your Honor. But you're not gonna clown or act a fool or use inappropriate language in this courtroom. You understand? Yes, Your Honor, I apologize. I apologize. So you gotta find a better way to express yourself. All right, I, I can understand that. Continue. Okay. That night, Your Honor, I, I, well, I feel like from the beginning, he's always stalked me, you know, even my friends at, at, at work would always tell me, like, you know, he's looking at you again. Look at and him. And they said the him. same thing to me. Really? Look, Vanessa's over there really? looking at you. Why would I look at you if I didn't have any feelings for you? If I didn't like I you? I don't know, because really? obviously you're okay. lying again. Yeah, I'm lying. Lie, really? lie, 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 lie. No, yeah, okay. I did not plan nothing that night, Your Honor. No, he We was, had started out no. using protection. He was doing the stalker thing where I would see, I would, you know, he would be looking at me, and I'd, I'd turn and look, and yeah, there he goes, staring at me again. Well, look at you, you're beautiful. Oh, gosh. Come on, now. Any, any kind of man that likes women would stare at you, yeah. I was, right? I was dressed in, in, in work clothes. So wait a clothes. minute. You're at work and you, people are saying to you, oh, he's looking at you, this is making you feel uncomfortable or you just feel like the guy I'm like, thinks man, you're beautiful? Uh, well, you looking back? You looking back? Yeah, because they would tell me you're staring at me again. They you look back say, and smile, though. <laughs> okay, You look so back and smile and give me the googly I eyes. I knew I had you, that's why. Huh? Hey, it is what it is. Hold on. So at this point, you're married, Miss Vargas. Your Honor, at the time, we were separated. So you two were intimate? Yes, just once. And then you found out you were pregnant? Yes, Your Honor. Were you also intimate with your husband at the time? Yes, Your Honor. A month before me and him had sexual intercourse, we, you know, me and my husband were still 
So within a 30-day or less time period, you had been intimate with your husband and also Mr. Angelari. Uh, yeah, yes, Your Honor. She um, told me it was and, over between her and her husband, Your Honor. Okay, well, she just told the court that she was separated. I, I try to tell people all the time that you're married until you're divorced. But look, that relationship, that's for them to handle. I'm trying to understand, during the period of time this child could have been conceived. Mm -hmm. How many possible fathers are there? I, there's only him and my ex. And your ex? Yes, ma'am. So, yes, Your Honor. do you immediately think it was your ex's or do you think it was Mr. Angelari's or are you just I clueless? wanted it to she be... She told me the baby was mine and the next thing you know, she's telling me it's her husband. I wanted to work things out with my husband, Your Honor. I wanted to do you it You gotta for face him. reality. So, when you first found out you were pregnant, Ms. Vargas, did you call Mr. Angelari and say, this child is yours? Yes, Your Honor. So you first you told him it was his. I, I first did. Then you decided I want to try to work this out with my husband. So you tell your husband that it's there his. There could be a chance that it was his. Another lie. And he no, he was willing. He was willing to take over responsibility even if it wasn't his. But you know, at seven months is whenever I got back with him. We actually moved in together. We were trying to work so things out. So you tried out. to work it out. We tried, but it didn't happen. It just didn't work. It didn't work. And and at as, this point. Did you tell Mr. Angelari, I'm working it out with my husband, I'm trying, you're yes, not Your the father, you're... I was trying to keep him away, you know, just... And I respected that. You told me one time I yes, didn't contact you again. Yes, but you were still... You were still texting him on Facebook, asking him questions about... Well, no, about I said, if you want to be a real man about it, you got to let me know if that kid looks anything like me. And you were still... Because I want to know. You were still causing problems. We were trying... I contacted like I said, you one time. So, wait, on, wait, wait, wait. So, what you're saying is, after you told Mr. Angelari you were pregnant, you asked him to give you some space because you're trying to work this out with your yes, husband. Yes, Your Honor. I moved away anyhow. You respected that to a certain extent, but in your mind, you knew that you could possibly well, have I a, a gut child. I had a gut feeling, so come September-ish is when I contacted her husband and her, saying, you know what, reality, whether you dislike me, whether you like me, you need to let me know if this <clears> is my child when the kid is born. That she never told me when he was born. I heard from people around town. Then I run into her mom at a restaurant one day and she shows me a picture and that put the gut feeling back in there. I didn't want Mr. Angelari to be the father. So I didn't want to have another kid. I didn't want to have another kid. Well, there we go. But the kid deserves better. He's got to have a mom and a father. I understand that. We need to come yes. to some resolution. And that's why we're here. That's, that's right. Why we're here. Now you're talking my language. Once you saw the picture of this child, the gut, the your gut, gut feeling, feeling came said, back. Press came this back. a little further. Yes, Your Honor. As so you say you reached out to them both. No, I didn't even talk to her until, because I have two kids that live in Washington State. When she told me there's no chance, the kid is yours, there's no way at all. Long term, when I was in Texas, I was trying to get back up to Seattle to be with my other two children. I didn't want to get in a serious relationship or have any kids. We like ended I said, up I was trying to save my marriage. That's, the, that's what I was trying to do. I was trying to do the right thing, and I felt like I was doing the right thing. Yes, I made a mistake, Your Honor, and I'm willing to fix it. It's the reason why I'm here. Yes, I did take a morning after pill, but there's that 99.9% .9 chance. So I was, I guess that there's one There's a 99.9% chance, nine point chance that, that you that were lying. You felt like she intentionally lied to you and to her husband. Yes, because the first few months, she's telling me I'm the dad. Then I end up getting a job up north. She told me, well, I want to try to work things out with my husband. I don't want him to try to get me for adultery or have anything happen with my children. I said, well, I can respect that. Do your thing. I moved up to Austin. She still lived down in Temple. I was 45 minutes away. I didn't talk to her. One of my friends that lived down in the same area told me, oh, she's getting big. She's ready to pop. So then come <laughs> September, my conscience is really wearing out on me like, well, is she going to tell me? Is she going to let me know something? No, I didn't hear nothing. I moved to Washington. She contacts me on Facebook when the child's six and a half months old. Okay. Tells me, That's when I, I tells felt... me, hey, yeah, he looked my like husband him. left. I don't have no more money. You got a kid here now. Really? No more money? When you Wait were the one... a minute. Wait a minute. So... That's what it seemed like to me. Why did she lie? You were the one asking the me if I needed money. Hey, well, let yeah, me help you, you out because, because I feel like you I'm told, the dad. Because you told me, well, you have a child here now, so... I have a big heart. And if I he told is you my no. kid, I took your word again. And I told you no. I don't need your help. I got this. I had, you know, two jobs and... then and... I... And then I helped you out. Yeah, you helped me out. But then you kept asking me, hey, you need times. some more help. You need some more help. You need some more help. No, I don't need your help. Well, yeah, because then the belief went away because I, I took a step back and said, hey, she lied to me from the get-go. She lied to her husband. I didn't Perfect. lie to him. I told him there was a chance it couldn't have been his, and he knew that. Then why did he tell me different? Yeah, proof. So, no, Mr. Angelari, 
do you feel like the only reason she's coming back to you now is because it didn't work out with her husband? I believe if her and her husband were still married, everything was still going well with them, I would never even hear about this. But I also see where she's coming from because she wants her son to have a father. And if he is my son, I want to be his father. I want to be involved in his life. And I want you to be involved. I want you to be there. When did you decide that you felt the child was Mr. Angelari? And beautiful. <laughs> beautiful little boy. You're emotional looking at your child because you feel... He calls me daddy. I'm just hurting for him because I want him to be there for him. And if I'm his father, I will be there for him. But what I, you know, why I thought she was just trying to maybe get some money out of me, I have some evidence I'd like to Absolutely, sir. What do you. you have? Pretty much stating after I told her I couldn't give any money, she states that I need you to give your rights away. I hope you stay away and never come around. I'll Jerome, put, he would make excuses. For me. I will put a restraining order he on you. He would always make excuses saying, oh, they weren't excuses. I was it was in the reality. hospital or I, I was, was in the hospital. I had a seizure or my car broke down or they it would did. always be something. These are messages that say, I need you to give away your rights. I hope you stay away and never come around. I will put a restraining order on you. What kind of mother does that when you think that's the father? What really? had he done to warrant a restraining order? Nothing, Your Honor. So this is just angry it's talk. It's just being angry. Just, I mean, he wasn't there. He would always make excuses saying, oh, I can't, I can't send you money. One time, he said he was going to send me money. I waited at Walmart for him to send the money, and he never called me. I waited at least four hours for him to call me back. He never called. So now... I had a seizure. I was in the hospital. Listen. He says that every single time. But now well, I, have medical to, record. I, I have to say this to you. When he was there in your face and you wanted to try to work it out with your husband, you said, look, give me some space. I want to try to work this out. Yes, Your Honor. And I think the child is my husband. So he went off. He was born a month early. So I was thinking, hey, maybe it is my husband's child, you know? OK. I I'll even give you that. But you got to give a man a chance to digest it and get prepared and yes, get his Honor. money in order. You told him to go off. And you were going to be with this, your husband. And then when you called him back and said, OK, well, I think he looks like you. This is your child. Get ready to get in gear. He still didn't know definitively. Because, Your Honor, when she told me that, it finally had put my gut feeling at rest. And I, I helped her out a few times. I helped her out with what I could. I did have some medical issues. She might have found it as an excuse. I apologize that I wasn't able to come through on that end. But then I also looked at, well, she's lied to me on numerous occasions. I lived in the same city as she did until the kid was six months old, five months old. Why couldn't you get a hold of me then? I felt like he was starting to look more like you, and I wanted you to be there. Do you the think reason. he looks like me now? Yes. Because my you... other two kids resemble me spitting image. Of course, he's going to look like the mother, too. It's not just going to be you. Well, yeah, that's understandable, but I don't see many of my traits. I have straight hair. He's got your lips, your nose, and your ears. He is a handsome boy. Yeah. <laughs> Your Honor. Yes, sir. I just want to know, is that my son? And are you going to let me be in his life? And Mr. Angelari, this is also particularly important to you because you didn't know your father. Exactly. I just reunited with my father after 15 years, and it's been great. It's been tough growing up without a dad. And I don't think any kid deserves growing up without either one of their parents. So that's why I want to get to the bottom of this. What was it like for you? I didn't have no structure. I didn't have no direction. I was in and out of jail, you know. I lived with my dad till I was 13, and I was straight-laced. You know, I got taken away by CPS by him, and then I didn't see him again until two weeks ago, and I'm 27 now. So it was very tough. You know, I, I have an older brother that tried being a father figure to me, and he kind of was, but... Do you believe that it was this experience that kept you asking those questions to Ms. Vargas, that kept you trying to figure out, is this my child? Even when you had the doubts, you still wanted to know because you didn't want the cycle to repeat itself. Yes, Your Honor. I mean, look at him. Why does he deserve only having one parent? That's why I'm here today. Me too, and that's why I want to know if he's my son, because he deserves better than that.
And I know she's a great mother. I know she is. I right. saw her with her other two children. She's a great mother. And you know, I will say this because I came down on but you, you know very what? hard Women... in this courtroom because I wanted you to take this seriously. However, I will say that I have seen many men come into this courtroom and a woman gives them the out and says, you're not the father. Go ahead about your business. And they do just that. I commend you because you kept persisting to figure out whether this was your son. Yes, Your and Honor. And that's commendable. Yes, Your Honor. <laughs> Ms. Vargas. Yes, Your Honor. What are you feeling at this time? Emotional, because I want him to have a father. And that's the reason why you really tried to work it out with your husband, is because you really wanted him to have. I was only trying to save my marriage. That was it. <laughs> it didn't work. And I'm sorry, I made a mistake. We all make mistakes, we're forgiven. We most certainly all do. <clears throat> now, with that said, are you ready to learn the results? Yes, Your yes, Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Jerome? There you go, Your Honor. Thank you. You're The results were prepared today by DNA Diagnostics and they read as follows. In the case of Angelari versus Vargas, as it pertains to 11 month old Giovanni Vargas, Mr. Angelari, You are the father. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's all I've wanted. We, like you said, everybody makes mistakes, but it's all about how you come out of it. And today, <clears throat> he now has a mom and a dad. Absolutely. And he deserves it. Oh, yes, he him. does. He's a great You want to hold guy. him? Yeah. That's my son. Yes, it is. <laughs> would you like to meet him in my chambers? Yes, Your Honor. That would be wonderful. I'm happy this has worked out for the both of you. And I'm even happier that it's worked out for Giovanni. I'll see you in chambers. Me too, Your Honor. Court is adjourned. You.